RBS Business Research Academy welcomes to you in the lecture number 34. In this lecture, uh, I'm going to discuss about the empirical example of the IPMA, which means uh, Importance Performance Map Analysis in the Smart PLS. Dear friends, as you uh, have seen in my the, uh, last video, 33 num video number 33 in that one, I told you that in the next video, I will discuss about the empirical example. Now, this empirical example will clarify all your uh, concepts uh, regarding how to perform the IPMA in the smart PLS. Like uh, about the uh, different steps are like you are looking here, the five steps are there, the image where the five steps are there. In this empirical example, all these five steps have been properly followed in this one. So that's why it is going to be the very important video uh, if you want to understand the IPMA. And at the end of this video, I will also discuss about the how and why we should uh, uh, especially apply the IPMA in our research paper. And what is the reason uh, when it occurs? So we should refrain ourselves from applying the uh, uh, like the IPMA. So from data view, it is very important. And you know, there is a research paper which I am following. That's about the gain more insight for your peers. Same uh, the where the important performance map analysis has been discussed in this one. So it is a wonderful research paper which is written by the Christopher uh, M. Rinkin and Marco Sardasis. These are these two are the pointers of smart peers. So now uh, we are starting our video uh, where I, uh, I'm discussing about the uh, empirical example of the IPM. But before this month, my name is Dr. Rahim Sumro and I'm from Shabdi University, Pakistan. And this is my uh, uh, the, uh, study period which was awarded to me from the Smart Peers Academy, Germany. Okay, so in this uh, example, actually uh, what happened is the UTAD is a one model which was applied in this one. And then uh, the in this one, the Al Ghadani, that means who has written a wonderful paper uh, by using the, this technique, uh, where the 72 knowledge workers are there. Now, these 70, 722, 722, these are our respondents. And uh, then uh, the model, which was the team technology acceptance model, where there are the four constructs are there, uh, which uh, four constructs eight is a determinant. So, four constructs they are determiners of the bare intention. And then uh, among them, like the first one is uh, a job expect effort expectancy and the subjective norm. And another one is a, a facilitating computer conditions. So the facilitating conditions. So these are some of them. Uh, in this one, uh, basically the figure number show six uh, shows the model and the PLS same result when using the empirical data and the smart PLS. Now here you're looking, uh, there's one model, this uh, our structural model where that this model has been analyzed where these three are the determinants of the our target uh, construct now which is about the bi bear intention and another one is fc and here our target custom is the use so now again now we are checking the again the, the impact of the bi on the use so now this is the oral about the uh, model which has been applied in this one and these are the uh, path analysis path values these are our r square r here so next uh, as you know then you know, first of all we have to check the measurement model so now when you talk about the measurement model there are two types of the models are there one is a uh, reflective and another the formative so my two, two videos are available the image you're looking here regarding the uh, understanding the difference between the reflective and the uh, formative constructs uh, in this one uh, like the after checking the measurability. So if we go on the model now here in the model, uh, you're looking that all our constructs are reflective. When our constructs are reflective, then uh, we have to check some of the important assumptions are over there. Like the first thing is the major liability either that there is a major liable and valid and uh, valid. So now you have to check all these ones and then the discriminant validity you have to also check and then uh, HTMT heterotrade monotrade you have to check if all are okay that means that uh, if all are okay this means that when uh, there is no any uh, right of violation all are the values of this one are in the green color in the smart field it's wonderful and then it means it's the green signal to go ahead and then what we have to apply the bootstrapping uh, 5000 with the 5000 sample and the 95 percent computer interval with the pca and it then shows that the, all the path indicators are significant now after applying the bootstrapping method we come to know that the, all the paths are significant and uh, whether that these p e e e and then the s n have a significant positive effect on the b e so now structural model and measurement model both we have applied here 
and after that one our first step is start so first step is this one so in this one uh, the first thing is that after reviewing the questionnaire we find that the indicator data are mostly on the interval scale from the one to seven if you remember in the last video i showed in indicator number one either the data should be metric or quasi metric so it's a metric data where the interval scale is from one to seven or from one zero to six or from the zero to eleven okay and uh, another thing is about the uh, do, do do not need to reverse the scale of an indicator there's no need to reverse anyone so here uh, another thing is uh, like this, and that uh, this is the uh, like the ut80 is your uh, name is the name of the project this uh, graphical model and these are the 722 records are there which we are applying in this one so this is overall about the uh, your model so and then if we come down now we inspect the outer bits. So now we have to inspect the outer, either outer bits are positive or negative. Now, what decision rule? Decision rule here is that the, uh, all indicators are positive. So in this one, in this model, all our indicators are positive. Outer bits, sorry, all our outer bits are positive. So when our, all our uh, outer bits are positive, then what? Then the uh, this is uh, uh, like the different color because it's very important so that's why i have changed this color otherwise rest of things are in the uh, yellow color in line with ibm standard one all requirements for conducting the analysis have been fulfilled and we can continue the analysis so now uh, in the stage number one whatever the requirements were there we have successfully fulfilled all those one now it's a green signal to go to go ahead and one major uh, uh, the benchmark uh, requirement was the uh, outward should be positive so all should uh, outer bits are positive now how to apply uh, this uh, tech, uh, this uh, procedure in the semantics now we have to go into the calculate and find the importance performance maintenance you're looking image here in this way you have to find out this one and then uh, we need to specify that target construct so here we have to specify as a target construct and others as a procedures okay so now uh then we said in very top of the procedures only direct are direct in both one we have to decide here and uh, in this one the use is our target construct okay and then choose the all the uh, procedures are the selected concern as options okay uh, we need to specify that each indicators minimum and maximum value required for rescaling of the data so now minimum and maximum value we have to specify over there now for example one and seven zero and six now these are our minimum we have to specify all of these one in the uh, smart PLS in this procedure so smart PLS automatically reads these minimum maximum values of the data how i'm i'm showing you this one so now uh, this is the table where we are finding uh, all these one uh, like here minimum and maximum you're looking here are automatically have been reported to you uh, reported by the uh, smart list to you now in this when you're looking no anyone is the uh, out of the range now all the values are either uh, if the range is one to seven all are within this range if the range is uh, zero to six all are within the one if the range is a zero to eleven all are within the range so now from this point of view there is no uh, uh, there is no any violation and then uh, another thing is about the if the respondents have not made use of the full scale, uh, then the minimum value two instead of the one. When the minimum value is one, but the respondent they have chosen the only, that uh, means uh, two and above, not the one. So in this regard, what the PLS same smart PLS cannot rescale the data. Smart PLS cannot rescale the data. In this smart will happen that the, our result will not remain within the zero to hundred, but it will remain within the minus five to ninety five. So now what the, we need to manually rescale the lemma. So now manually we have to rescale all these, but how we can uh, manually rescale, I'm showing the same thing also here. Uh, in this one, you're looking at the maximum and the minimum. So now here is a maximum and minimum. If your minimum is one, uh, is a two and maximum is seven, then you should specify rescale it, uh, not a two, but one, provide his right hit one. Okay, and for example, if the one and six, actually the maximum bar the seven so in this one again you have to change from the six to seven so this is the manual rescaling and uh, then uh, you are looking here all the 
uh, all the uh, respondent made the use of the full range of the indicator skill is in uh, indicated in the maximum as i already told you that all the uh, means the respondent they have chosen the within the uh, within the range like the uh, uh, minimum and maximum have been chosen over there so that's why there's no problem the rescaling here and then another thing as about the smart peer skin are automatically computes the ipma state number two and three have been automatically covered so now the now applying the IPMA. So now in this one step two and step zero have been fulfilled, have been completed. So now so far we have covered the three step one, two, and three. Now here we are talking about step number three. Uh, it, it it means that that creates the importance perform map. Now step number four, as you know, it is creating the uh, map. Uh, in this one, what uh, is there? Uh, okay, here it shows the results of the standardized called un standardized co path coefficient. Okay, path coefficient it shows over there in the result and the quality criteria uh, uh, IP may may uh, under the uh, used constraint. So here you're looking at one image that means where the hyperlink is given under the quality uh, criteria. And if you choose this one, then it will lead you towards the uh, use uh, like the that map. And then uh, in the uh, like the final results total effects smart village display the importance of the values in the very uh, matrix format so in the matrix form all those are given to you i'm showing you these matrix forms and then uh, uh, another thing is about that we find the two direct procedures direct procedures i mean not indirect b i behavior image and fc have a particularly high importance although the performing uh, at the like the Comparable level, the FC construct has considerably high performance than the BI. How? And that means we are looking, uh, we are going towards the figure number 10. So now, okay, here's the figure number 10. So now we have, I think we have to rotate it. So now this has, the figure has been rotated over here and you're looking here that the, this our BE, no, uh, but this one, okay. So now BE is in the red color. Uh, okay, this one is a B in the red color and the EE in is the uh, blue color. So now these are there. So now uh, from the important performance part, it is a wonderful performance. From the importance point of view, it's a, like the so so importance. Now, uh, because we have not mentioned, uh, we have not determined the uh, mean over there, mean of the performance and mean of the importance. So that's why we can roughly say about this one. And when you talk about the BI, it says the wonderful uh, means, uh, performance as well as uh, the uh, importance also. So now this type of the map will be created when you apply uh, the IP map procedure. So now we are going back, uh, displaying the R square values of the endogenous latent variable. Now in the path model, IP may result shows the performance values of each latent variable. So here, this procedure does not provide you the I R square, but it provides you the performance values of the each latent variable. And then uh, this is another one, the IPMA results shows an unstrained rise and the rescale outer weights for the measurement model, regardless if they are formative or uh, reflective. So either your scale are uh, like the constant of formative or reflective, no problem, but here unstrained rise coefficient will be given to you and the outer weights. So now that to decide outer weights are very important. And then uh, here looking at the, about the okay, this one, the uh, quality criteria, importance of MAP, uh, you, if you click this one, then we will reach in this like the EE2. So it is saying about the EE2, uh, like the, which is the indicator of the EE. It, this indicator means that it is easy for me to become uh, skillful using computer. So now the respondent thinks it is easy for me. So what if what respondent requires to become the skillful in the computer has relatively high importance when the uh, focusing on the construct and while offering the some room for the performance domain. Now, now its importance very high, but the performance of the date in, uh, like the respondent is very low. So now it's a room, it's a one uh, like the uh, like the one type of the uh, area where the the performance should be increased. So how to increase the performance of respondent in this one? So here it is written that the performance improvement could focus on the offering a high quality computer trainings to provide users with the skill and the knowledge they need. If you provide uh, the, the, these the high quality computer trainings, then now the performance can also be increased. So from importance point of view, it's very important. It means, that means that the uh, respondent has attached a very much important to this one. Now the, you have to provide the training to increase the performance. In this way, that would be wonderful. 
So in this way, we can decide, like, uh, uh, you know, the manager action. So here, the, this, in this way, the manager, manager action is required to be uh, performed over there, especially when we're writing our research paper. And this one, the one importance of uh, the part is about the managerial, uh, uh, like the, uh, we can say recommendation. So in this one, by applying this procedure, we can recommend so many things uh, which can be uh, like the drawn, which can be uh, uh, given to you by the, which can be given to you by the IPMA, and accordingly we can suggest to for the managerial decisions over there. Okay, and uh, in the last, data summary in conclusion, in this one, some of the important things are there. The our research rely on the standard PLS path model. Now here we talk about the mostly the researcher what they do they apply this measurement model and structure model and then they finish the data analysis in the smart PLS. But they do not focus on the CDA conformity data analysis. By the way, my two videos are available on the conformity data analysis and their video, uh, their image your look, images you are looking here. And then the FEMIX is uh, like the uh, another one. Uh, the means of which we do not normally, and the PLS, POS is another one, and the moderator, uh, like, and then the multi group analysis. We normally do not uh, focus on these one. Again, these are very important, like the IPMA is, not, is now you have realized the importance of the IPMA. And uh, then, uh, uh, furthermore, it is written that the IPMA belongs to the suit of open related methods. So now it's openly, the means uh, researcher, they neglect this method, but are particularly useful for generating the additional findings and conclusion. So, so some of the final conclusion have been uh, uh, the found with the help of the path model. And additionally, if you want to get more finding conclusion, then it is necessary to apply IPMA over there. And then uh, by combining the analysis of the IPMA, uh, uh, like the performance in, uh, uh, allows you to for uh, uh, prioritizing the construct to improve the certain target customer. So in this way, you can know the means of which my construct needs uh, more importance or more performance, or which construct is low and it needs them. So now there's one room to improve the performance of that construct. This can be done through this help, uh, through the IPMA. And then another things about the Exporting the analysis to the indicator level allows for identifying the most important area of specifics. So not only you can apply this procedure on the constant level, but also on indicator level. So then uh, now the these results are, for example, particularly important in the studies researching on different impact of certain constructs. So now different constructs are there like the different dimensions of the construct are there like the personality which has the five dimensions and like the 10 technology acceptance model which has a certain uh, dimension, cultural reputation has a certain dimension and then you know there's a customer uh, certification has also certain dimension. In this regard, if you are working on such of the model, then it is advised to you that you should use the IPMA over there to find out the which one which perform is very is good or which one perform is uh, not good. And another extension of IPMA used is in the context of multi group. When you are performing the multi group analysis, then it is again advised that you should use, I think, IPMA. And the last but not least, uh, uh, which is the decision making, like the one step. Uh, like the decision making uh, maker like Mickey, that the researcher should refrain from using the IPMA if the analysis does not meet the requirements mentioned in the first step. So whatever requirements are in the first step, if you are not meeting, so it is always suggested not to apply this procedure. And such is having the only positive outer waves. And, and now if the positive outer waves are, then okay, that's the Mr. You can apply the IPMA. Again, if the outer waves are negative, then it is suggested not to apply IPMA procedure in this one so in this one our this is, uh, example has been concluded has been completed and uh, i hope uh, the minister uh, this example has clarified your different concepts uh, regarding the five steps of the ipma uh, in the uh, like the in a smart media software in the video lecture number 35 practically i have done how to analyze or how to apply uh, this procedure of the IPMA in the smart fields. If you find time, please pause that video also. So at the end, thank you very much for uh, watching this video uh, completely. In, and uh, very soon we will meet in, the, in another video. Thank you very much.